pretty good. I have two solar panels. Did you order the solar panels? I think we ordered the solar panels too. You would. Yeah. 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 Uh, I had replaced the solar panel um, voltage regulator because it wouldn't allow the batteries to charge full charge. They'd go up to about 80 or 85 percent and then it would start to fade off. So I got a smart, a smart voltage regulator for my solar panels and it samples the batteries all the time and it will continue to charge the batteries as long as they're below 100 okay. percent. So smart, a smart regulator for the solar panels. Uh, smart regulator for the solar panels. Yes. I don't know if that comes as an option, but... Well, if they have solar panels, they'll have a voltage regulator. Uh -huh. You need to make sure it's a smart one. And I think that, that they would know the difference between okay. them. Okay, I think it's probably what we'd have in our houses. You got these chairs too, didn't you? Yeah. Put them in. Yeah, those are Target. Right, nice. But they have the base on them still. So the so base stay. on them. And when you're cruising, you sit here and you have a 360 degree view. Oh, the swivel, yes. So when you're cruising out in the ocean, this is where you sit. You don't have to sit out there. You can turn your auto helmet on. Well, not like you have to turn a corner or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's go down in my side of the boat. Then. Okay. How about you see these slots on the your boat will come put the panel mm -hmm. down there? Theoretically, that's to use so that in your in rough weather, so that if you have wave water comes in, in here and stuff, like mm -hmm. they would be a super trip hazard. Mm -hmm. I never use them. Uh -huh. Could be a horrible trip hazard. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, you do a. If it's gonna be that those. bad, you put the you put the door down. Yeah, you got the doors down anyway. Yeah. You're, you're not gonna have these doors up if you're in bad weather. So. Well, you could get them surprise pooping. <laughs> When we first got this boat, yeah, I, told, I told Richard Ward, the designer, mm -hmm. of this, I said, you've done a remarkable job of designing this boat except for one problem. I said, right here you only have room for five wine bottles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh he didn't have enough wine storage. Yeah. So oh, I I, we use this for storing our, our PFDs. Mm -hmm. Your personal PFDs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our tethers. Oh, good. Oh. You need tethers. They're bungee tethers too. Bungee tethers, and they have oh, two yeah. clips. So you always are clipped on, even if you have to change from one to another. Mm -hmm. And don't ever clip onto the lifelines. Mm. Use jack lines. And right. I'll show you those. Okay. I didn't bring my Why are they battery. Like oh, my lines. battery style. Because when you have this on. Damn. Better did? I think so, and, and my charger is back up there. And well, if you have a D ring, I gotta go back to the car. What your PFD should have for you go out in the ocean at all. Hmm? I'm recording. Is this portion. Oops. In there. In here. And so now this is your lifeline. Mm -hmm. And you clip onto a jack line. And the jack lines. Oh, you store those and let you go offshore? Yeah. These are jack lines. And they went all the way from the cleat, which is on the bow, all the way across here, mm -hmm. and tie them down to here. So you never leave the cockpit unless you're clipped onto the jack line. Mm -hmm. So these are easy and cheap to, to get. Right, just it's just line. Do they clip on at the end? Do they have a clip at the end of these? Or you just tie no, them? No, I just tie, tie them. On. On. Okay. I just tie them. Use your bone. Yeah. Also, you notice I have some D-rings. I have one right here mm -hmm. and one over here. Did you install those? I installed those. Oh. And the reason I like this one particularly over here is because of, I want to leave this area right here and get out here. Mm -hmm. Either you can catch a fish. Okay. Or to change the traveler, or to do something out here. Mm -hmm. I'm tied up. Right. And that makes it nice and easy to grab the jack line. Yeah. Yeah, because the jack line. Oh, that's a good idea. Did you get a picture of that? The jack, the jack line is right here. Mm -hmm. So I hook onto the jack line and can go forward and slide all the way forward. So 
So where's the jack line? It, tie, it ties back to there? I tie it in here. Oh, okay. Oh, and you put that handhold on or does no, that No, this handhold is standard. Okay. Yeah, and they have handholds here. That's one thing some of the other boats didn't have enough handholds yeah. that we looked at. And I thing. added uh -huh. three handholds when we got to New Zealand uh -huh. because going across the Tasman Sea, I found out that going from here to here, I had nothing to hang on to. You uh -huh. know when the door's down? Uh -huh. And so I installed this one. So when the door's down, I can hang on to it. I also uh -huh. installed these two. The, the two inside ones? Yeah, because you're going down those stairs, you yeah. want to hang on to something. Yeah. Okay, so they weren't installed by the factory. No, those, those, are yours. those I installed. Very smart. Uh, after we got the Tasman, after we went across the Tasman Sea. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things our friends, we took our friends up to see the fusion in Vancouver. And they noticed there weren't near enough handholds for when the boat's in, in any yeah. kind of rough water. Because it was flat like this yeah. when we went up yeah. to try out the fusion. So I added those three and that, that, that well worth it. Well worth it. I have one electric winch, which is this one right here. Did that come with the boat? No. Well, yeah, it came with the boat, but it's an option. It's an option. Mm. We're getting up. I think, I think we two got speed. it. Fast slow. I got this for two reasons. One is uh, <coughs> when we did a one to see the boat, they had one down in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Kirk German had one down there. Mm -hmm. So I went down there and we raised the sail manually. Huh. And I thought, oh, <laughs> that's 840 square feet of sail. Mm -hmm. wow. And that's I knew hard, I was going right? to get a, a, a thicker sail material too. And I said, I, I don't want that. But probably more importantly is that I wanted it so that if Carol has to haul me up the mast, she's not down here grinding. <laughs> mm -hmm. She can just sit there and push the button and watch me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for safety reasons, I got it. It also, when you're in really rough seas and you have to, you have to reef, mm -hmm. uh, you need the electric winch to reef. It, it really takes a lot of... Well, that way you don't, don't have to come off the wind, too, to reef, right? Right. Because you can't, a lot of times, if your heavy seas come off the wind to reef. You it's don't want to go broadside to the wave. No. <laughs> yeah. So, no. electric quench, I would swear by. It's just, you don't need to. One is one's enough. Okay. Let's walk around this way. I'm going to go out on the bow. 